Good morning, John. There was a little moment on my cancer journey that I have not talked about when I had gotten my ultrasound and my lymph nodes looked the way that lymph nodes look when there's cancer in them. Well, I had an appointment with my like normal doctor before I got my biopsy results back and there wasn't very much that she could tell me, but I had a big question and I figured I was just being silly. So I asked the question. I said, my big concern is that I'm gonna be dead in like a month, but I'm not gonna be dead in like a month, right? Cause if I am, then I need to like do stuff. And she said, at this point, we can't really say anything for sure. So that day I went home and I did a bunch of stuff. I wrote some letters. I recorded some of the bedtime stories that I told to Oren. I made sure that Catherine had all my passwords. Honestly, handling practicalities was a lot more comfortable than just staring into the abyss. Now, after that first ultrasound where I probably had cancer, I only ever got good news. It turned out it wasn't like metastatic from somewhere else. It turned out further to be one of the most treatable kinds of lymphomas and at a fairly early stage as well. Then as I started taking the chemo, I could feel with my fingers, the tumors getting smaller and softer. One weird thing about cancer treatment is that it made it pretty hard for me to enjoy anything. Part of that's just like the nausea and fatigue and constant discomfort. But also there's the brain fog, which is a powerful thing and kind of made it hard to like focus on anything enough to enjoy it. And then with mortality tossed out to the potentially near future rather than the immediate future, there was a bit where like it wasn't clear to me entirely what the point of anything was. That's not a problem I've ever really had before. Like I just stopped being interested in much and that was very unpleasant for me. My like first solutions to that problem were just like stay in the structures that you already have. Make the Vlogbrothers videos tweet about science, try to get excited about whatever interesting science things are going on. And that was good, but it was work. Uh, Cause there was this undercurrent of like, why to everything I was doing? Like being sick is depressing, not in the, like colloquial sense. It literally is depressing. There were, however, things I could enjoy. First, Marvel Snap, which is a mobile phone-based card game that happens in roughly five minute intervals where you, if you are me, get to completely trounce upon your opponent who I assume is a child. Also music retained its beauty for me. One of the most beautiful things that people do, I was able to just like put on nice headphones and be like, this is, art. I love this. But third thing, when I first got sick, I asked folks to send me ideas for media that I could enjoy while I was like down and out and exhausted. And I got podcasts and TV and video games and movies. But when I was doing bad, which was most of the time, I was generally too foggy to enjoy any of those things. Like I just could not keep my attention on them. But the people who sent me stand-up comedians saved me. Stand-up comedy is always like less than 15 seconds away from a joke and everything is encapsulated so that the bit usually doesn't last for more than a few minutes. It was the thing that got me out of just the scrolling through TikTok, which was like an emotional minefield and also not as rewarding as like a thing that a person put together into 60 or 90 minutes that actually tells a little bit of a story. I watched maybe an unhealthy amount of stand-up. I started watching stand-up that I did not like just because I was interested in it. Like, why is this working on the people who it is working on? And yeah, after a while, I just started to get really interested in how the comedians were doing it. Like, it started to look like a magic act to me where it was all about like misdirection and how do you bring someone along? What are they doing to my brain to grab me and pull me through this entire experience of a joke or a bit? And the tools they used to keep control of me the whole time and never lose me, like the silence and the sound and the stillness and the movement, uh, what they're doing with the microphone, how they're standing on the stage, all of the jokes that they have to tell on the way to the joke. I started to get obsessed with it. And then I started to write in my cancer journal as if things were bits from a comedy show. I found myself being interested and I didn't have to work to be interested. I didn't need like some kind of external structure to get me interested. I just was interested. And I was like, maybe a little terrified of going back to the part where I didn't have that interestedness again, that I just held on as tight as I could to that thread. And as I was finishing chemo, I was working with my friend Sarah Aswell on some stand-up comedy. And then we worked together to book out one of the theaters in like the three screen theater in, in Missoula, the Roxy. And then I started out with like 10 minutes and then I did 20 and then I did 30. And by the end of it, I had like the bones of a 60 minute comedy special. And people kept telling me that it was good, uh, but I did not trust them. So I sent a video recording of one of the later ones. It was like a 50 minute version of it to a bunch of my friends who are comedians or who work with comedians and they said 
that it was good. And one of those friends was Sam Reich, who is also the CEO of Dropout TV. And he gave me a ton of amazing feedback on like his favorite parts and like things that I could fix, etc. But then he finished off his email with Hank, this is wildly refined for your first time out. Should we produce this for you as a special and put it on Dropout? I just stared at that email like giddy for a whole minute. I could not believe that he was offering that. But there was a moment when I was thinking, I would say, Sam, actually I am honored, but I think that you should start doing stand-up comedy on Dropout with somebody more experienced. I'm a science guy, I am not a comedian. When I brought up that concern, Sam was like, Hank, I know what I'm doing. You doing this first will help us bring attention to less well-known comics when we do stuff with them. And I don't know if that's true, but it was convincing. It's the kind of thing you'd say to me if you wanted to convince me to do it. But I think the two biggest reasons I decided to actually buckle down and do the thing, because I was still a pretty long way away from it being like ready to happen, uh, is, is first, I think we need more people to be talking openly and honestly about cancer. I think that would be better, and I am glad to be a person who is doing it. But second, because when I first thought I might die, I wanted to make sure I got some stuff done. But then, after a while, I didn't really want to do anything. I want to want things. And if I constantly question whether it's okay to want them, I'm kind of just driving myself back down toward that bad place. And I don't think any good was being done by me in that place. So I kept working on the special for a few months. I, I kept working with Sarah Aswell, who was my original comedy coach here in Missoula. And I also hired Ben Acker to help me with some parts I was having a hard time with. And then I just freaking did it. Uh, and I can't, I can't believe that I did it. And I equally cannot believe that the special is out on Dropout today. You can go watch it right now. <laughs> And I'm not terrified at all. And now, for some logistics, Dropout TV is a streaming service. If you want to sign up for it, it's $6 per month. I know that you already have too many subscriptions, but honestly, Dropout is the best content subscription I have outside of YouTube Premium. I do not make any extra money if you sign up, but it is the only way to watch the special, and I think they did an amazing job producing it, and I think that you should sign up. Once you watch my thing, there's so much other good stuff. I'd suggest watching the last two seasons of Game Changer, watching the first season of Very Important People. You can also watch Dimension 20, which is like comedians playing Dungeons and Dragons, uh, except that also you cry a bunch. And I am in Mentopolis, which is a short season, if you want to try that out. Also, if you want something like quick, that's very funny, breaking news is always there to fill in any 10 minutes you have before bed. It's like a streaming service if everything on it were designed specifically for me. It's really good. You should check it out. Again, $6 a month, and they're just really great people, and it's fun. Also, if you could let me know what you think about the show, you could do that in the comments here, or on Twitter, or threads, or wherever I am in places, because I'm not used to there not being comments, and there are no comments on Dropout, and that's going to be disorienting for me. John, I'll see you on Tuesday.